Hi and hello. Welcome to another session of Beginner's Bible Discovery. So, we are continuing our discussion of faith as new Christians, as Christians at any stage in our walk. We need to be clear about faith because faith is the foundation, a foundational principle of Christianity and of our salvation. The just shall live by faith. So to kick off, we're going to start with scripture. That's the place to start with. That's the place to be. Second Corinthians, right? So this is the Apostle Paul's second letter to this church at Corinth that we have that's included in the scriptures at least. And we're going to read those 10 verses, of course, to build context because it's actually one verse we're going to focus on. All right, so this one reads, for we know now, let's just read to the end. Let's just read to the end. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Hmm. Verse 2. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. Verse 3, if so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Verse 4, for we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Verse 5, now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God who also had given unto us the illness of the Spirit. Big S. So we know as the Holy Spirit, right? The six. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. The seven. For we walk by faith, not by sight. The eight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Verse 9, Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Verse 10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Now, that's what I said. Let's just read to the end. Because reading all along, with all the images used and everything, what's going on here? But verse 10 sheds some light, right? So when they talk about the tabernacle, they mean body, right? Earthly tabernacle. And there's a heavenly tabernacle, meaning that when saints go to heaven, there's a new body there that's eternal in the heavens, right? So as I say, read, read, read. Do not be daunted by the Bible. I remember, well, I came to the Lord very young, right? I was a teenager. And of course, well, you know, the Bible is complex and it's this and it's that, you know. You would need a lot of help to understand it, you know. And I mean... I'm not saying you will not need help to understand it, but I'm saying it's more accessible than a lot of people <laughs> may lead us to believe. You can read every day. You can read and follow what's happening. Because as we saw, you have the comforter, right? We have the comforter, as we see in the word, we are given the comforter who shall lead us into all truth and guide us. So if anything challenges you, you ask the Lord to 
open your eyes to what he wants you to see. And again, as you read and get familiar with the Bible, and you start to be able to compare scripture with scripture, which is very important, then your understanding will open more and more. All right? So reading, reading all of this. Wow, what is this? Where is this going? And then verse 10. Oh, well, okay. All right? So this is, this, is the, this is the writing. This is written this way. Right? So from the time you read verse 10, you realize, okay, while we're here, we're absent from the Lord. We're on earth. The Lord's in heaven. And then when we go to heaven, we're absent from the body, present with the Lord. And right. Now, so we're focusing on this. You know, this jumped out at you. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Hmm. So we'll talk a little bit about that in this session. All right. Now, remember last session, we spoke about straw manning, right? A tactic that some people use to win arguments. I suppose when you want to win at all costs, <laughs> you know, you resort to tactics like that, where you purposely, you know, misrepresent. I mean, honest misunderstanding of someone's argument. It can happen. Okay, fine. That is why, you know, it's a good idea before you respond to someone, make sure that you're clear on what they are saying, you know. But to purposely, it's not that they don't understand, they understand fully the opponent's argument, but purposely tear it down to a point where it's a straw man, it's not a real, it's not real, you know, it's easy to knock over. It's something that can come at you as a Christian. I can tell you that, right? Now, if we look at a verse like this, for we walk by faith and not by sight. You know, I have seen the attempts to use this to say, well, you know, as a Christian, you're off center and you're living in, you know, fairy dust land or something like that. But if you were to think about it, who lives all by sight and not by faith? Is anybody? Because, okay, the scripture here, so we, the context of it is, well, the body you have now is the body you're not going to have in heaven. You're going to have a different body, a body that's eternal in heaven. We're discussing things you can't see. And then he reminds the Corinthians, remember you walk by faith, which we establish is trust and confidence. Well, in this case, trust and confidence in the Lord, trust and confidence in his final sacrifice, everything that he's done and everything that he has promised to do, which is all in his word. So we're not going to see everything. And I don't know if any human can honestly argue that they see everything and everything they believe they have seen and they will never believe anything they have not seen I don't believe that's practical so hmm, let me choose my words carefully I don't know that argument is that an honest argument really to charge a believer, to charge a Christian who walks by faith with being out of touch with reality because they walk by faith and not by sight. Do non-believers walk only by sight and never by faith? Really? Hmm. Um, Hebrews 11.3 By faith Notice Hebrews 11.3. So this is two verses down from Hebrews 11.1, 1, right? So by trust and confidence in the Lord that speaks, by faith, we understand that the words, plural, just want to emphasize that will, 
explore that another time. Worlds, plural, right? Were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So the things that we see are made of things that our eyes can't perceive. Now note, this is Hebrews, this is what? 2,000 years ago written, roughly. I don't know. I must say, I'm not sure if they had anything like microscopes, anything resembling that to see really small things. Not sure where they were with telescopes to see really big things out in space or how much they were seeing. Maybe they were seeing something. But not like now, where we have Hubble and we have all these sophisticated microscopes. Now, talking about sophisticated microscopes, look at something here. I often think about the atom when considering this issue, right? So the atom, I'm no scientist. So this is, at this very basic level, I think the point can be made, right? So learning science class in school, pretty much, that the atom is the smallest component of everything. And then, but wait, subatomic particles were later discovered. So there's the atom, and then there are things inside the atom. Electrons, neutrons, protons, right? And then we have the nucleus made up of neutrons and protons. Hope I remember my science well. And the nucleus itself is really, really crucial. A lot of um, medical um, scientific developments de depend on the nucleus and anything in science with the word nuclear in it. Now, a lot good, some probably not so good, but the point is the atom and the particles inside and the nucleus, they're all very, very small and too small for anyone to actually see. Uh -huh. However, Atoms are accepted as the building blocks of everything. So I read Khan Academy, and that's, that's, if you are a science person and you can read the more sophisticated literature, sure, but you know, Khan Academy is for school children or anybody that wants to learn who are not that expert, any type of expert level, you know, so. And I just had to put a source there because I didn't make this up. <laughs> Where did I get it from? All right. I read a portion of Khan Academy explanation. So the atom and everything in the atom, we haven't actually seen it, but I remember all those really cool diagrams in science textbooks. So you mean they drew those diagrams and they stand by them and I'm not doubting it. Right? But they haven't actually seen it. So how were they able to make those drawings if they haven't actually seen them? Like see, like your eyes see. And even with microscopes, and we have really powerful microscopes, even with them, we can actually see, but we can perceive that atoms exist and that they're present and that they indeed form the foundation of the things that we see. So in other words, we know atoms are there. We know those subatomic particles are there. We know the nucleus is there. Base that we can't see. All those things we cannot see and we know they're there. I'm not disputing that one iota at all. And why can I even be so sure? And I'm not a scientist. Why? We know they're there because of things we can't see. You know? So, Hebrews 11.1. <laughs> I mean, Hebrews 11.1, 1, 
let's keep it contextualized. I, I try to resist temptation to go on any kind of application mode, right? Substance of things hope for evidence of things not seen. That that dynamic of knowing, I guess I could use the word knowing of things we can't see based on what we can see. Because, well, in the case of the atom, everything is made up of atoms, every single thing. And I believe one of the early evidences of it is states of matter and how they're arranged, you know, influences the state of the matter. So you see the matter, you see the water, well, you see the steam that tells you there's gas. So even if you don't see it, you smell it or whatever, right? tangible experience, but you can see gas, depending, uh, steam, right? You can see that a cloud, depending on what type of gas or gases we're dealing with. These are things you can see. And they're evidence of the atoms that we cannot see. Now, I did find an article. Um, <laughs> let me just mention it. Just mention it. All right, now I did find this, and the date on it is November 16, 2020. So recent stuff, so photo of a single atom. Well, they made some sort of contraption there with microscopes, right? So the caption says, atoms are so small that it's almost impossible to see them without microscopes. But now an award-winning photo shows a single atom in an electric field and you can see it with your naked eye. Um, there's a dot, I don't know if you could see it there, but you could probably search and look for it if this interests you, right? All right, so this photo, here it is again, zoomed in a little bit. Again, I don't know if you could see, I suppose what they're talking about there, there's a dot there. There's a dot, right? The photo taken by Mr. Nadlinger and titled that won an award. Okay. The photo depicts a, sim a single strontium atom embedded. Yeah. yeah, look at this. Embedded inside a strong electric field blasted by lasers, which cause it to emit light. Okay, so you're able to isolate something. Again, they know. I'm not saying no, that is not what they say it is. I can't say that. But this part here is pretty interesting. Whatever they did, they cause it to emit light. So you could see where it is. You know, I suppose this picture is zoomed in a lot because these things are small. I don't know if we could conceive of how small these things are. But the fact remains that, okay, we see a dot. There it is, a dot. That doesn't look like a picture in my textbook. Again, not casting any doubt on the picture in the textbook. Not saying it's not that. Don't miss my point, please. Okay, so we've seen, again, we're going by what we can see. There's a bright dot. But we still can't see, really. But the bright dot, well, those who are in this community, this would be you know, very significant. Yes, we see a dot. But it still serves as evidence for what's in the textbook. If you understand what I'm saying, right? So we've seen, but we, have, we still haven't seen. <laughs> Right? I suppose nobody else has been able to do this, like isolate something like that where you see a dot and then you realize, wait, is that the atom? But it still doesn't look like what I learned an atom looks like. You know, can't see it. I'm not saying that's not it there, but the point is we can't see it. This is as zoomed in as we can go. Maybe in time. Now, okay. Let me just see. Now, maybe in time, somebody will make a microscope that we can actually see the thing with the, the image we have in textbooks, 
the electrons whizzing around and all that type of thing. Who knows? But the point is this. The scripture tells us that things we see are made of things we cannot see. I think that's what we're talking about. You know. I would think so. And number two, even if somebody were to invent a microscope that would enable us to see, just how we saw that picture with the dot there, enable us to see the thing with the elections whizzing about, there's no denying. The fact still remains that for thousands of years, any of us who have learned and believe in science, which would be all of us to some extent, we've believed in the atom. Everything is built on the atom and we haven't seen it, never seen it until that moment in case somebody lends a microscope that we actually see the pictures in the book, you know? So the Christian walks by faith and not by sight, okay? Does the non-believer walk by sight and not faith? Hmm. So don't let, listen, don't let anyone confuse you, <laughs> right? Don't let anyone make you feel, you know, that the concept of walking by faith and not by sight, that having faith at all is so strange. And, and, and we've seen so far that it's not, it's not anything strange at all. And it's testified in the word and grounded in reality at different levels as we've seen so far, you know? Now, beware of, I hear this all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. You know, if I decide to watch, you know, those debates, Christian and non-Christian, non-believer, this comes up all the time and they double down on this. Right? There's no scientific evidence. You know, no, you know, not to say little or I'm not satisfied with no scientific evidence. No, none. No reasons to believing in the Bible that creation is true. Nothing helps to prove it in any way. No objects, no documents, no official statements, nothing. Nothing. No facts, no piece of information. Really? Nothing? <laughs> I don't know. A couple of things we had to pinch ourselves about, huh? We all rely on some type of testimony at the beginning, didn't you say? We all kind of agree there is a beginning. There was a belief that the universe was forever. And that has that seemed to be shifting. Well, the Christian that read the Bible always knew that. But everybody else, scientific community, especially, is now coming to terms with that. But we all rely on some type of testimony of it. You know. So, you know, it's as if this is saying there is no testimony as far as the Christian is concerned. Because the Christian will go by Genesis. You know? But that is testimony. In fact, witness testimony even. As we get into our Bible reading more in depth, you'll see that. It's actually witness testimony. And well, science has its testimony too. Its theories, its hypotheses about how things started. And of course, they would point to this and that today. Well, look at this fossil, or look at this whatever, and look at that whatever as evidence of it. Now, again, back to the Bible, back to the word here. This is God speaking, right? This is in the book of Job, chapter 38. I pulled out these three verses. 
God is speaking and God is asking the humans, where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? We all have to remember none of us were here, right? Believer and unbeliever, neither of us were here. Declare if thou hast understanding. Hmm. Hast thou perceived the breath of the earth? Well, speaking thousands of years ago, of course, I mean, it was like, but even now, the numbers that we have to use to define things, you know, and even the size of the earth. Well, we learn now it's not the biggest thing in the universe, but it's still big. Compared to my size, I can tell you, it's still really big. And I'm not a scientist. I can't perceive the breath of it, to be honest. Declare if thou knowest it all. This is God speaking. You know? Knowest thou it? Because thou was then born? Or because the number of thy days are great? You know, just, you know, cut me down to size, you know? And humans, you know, we, yeah, yeah, it just cut me down to size, right? Where were you? In the grand scheme of things, the length of your life is where, <laughs> you know? Pretty sobering. <laughs> Pretty sobering to say the least. So this um, chapter 13 of Job is really good reading. Not the whole Bible is good reading, but, you know. Right, so I wish I could do the whole sciencey thing justice, but I cannot. But um, looking into it, I mean, if you um, type in the search, creation science, or that type of thing, um, links come up more than this. But these three are the three that I have kind of looked at. So I'm not going to suggest anything I have not looked at, if you understand, right? So if... Well, I mean, I would suggest you have a look. It's Genesis History. This is um, like a video series. All of this, by the way, is on YouTube, right? This is pretty compelling, right? This gentleman here has done a lot of work for a very long time. He has a lot of creation seminar videos and that type of thing. So... I would recommend this. And this debate, I think of all the, the debates, I sound like I saw so many, but <laughs> of the debates I've seen, this is, I think this is the best. This is a strong recommend, right? A science buried God, right? These two distinguished gentlemen, gentlemen, right? So, I mean, you can have a look, at least be reasonably informed of what is said. Or if this is really your thing, well, this is a good starting point. And you could go deeper after that. Like I said, there are other sites and whatnot, but those three are the ones I have looked at. You know, those three I have looked at. So, Something to think about. No evidence, and they repeat it, and they repeat it, and they double down on it. No scientific evidence. Uh, hmm. I think these would tell a different story, I would say. We walk by faith, not by sight. And you think of it, all of us do. You know, but they use the word and the promise in the Bible to just drive the point home. Don't forget, we're dealing with things we cannot see. We're talking about things we cannot see. God, we cannot see. Salvation is real. We can't, we can't see it. It's not tangible, right? But faith is the evidence of it, which is not a strange concept for us. To believe, to know that something exists that we cannot see based on what we can see. 
which it is, which it is undeniably affected by. So we'll end this session for now. God bless you and keep you. See you in the next one.